in this video at first i will talk about why do we need phasor algebra after that i will introduce you with the phasor or complex algebra in case of dc circuit analysis we have to perform the mathematical operations such as addition subtraction division multiplication exponents even we have to solve system of linear equations in case of mesh and nodal analysis see in case of dc circuit analysis it is very easy for us to perform this kind of mathematical operations because the dc values are constant value or a fixed numerical value so we can easily perform this kind of operations for example let's say i have this dc circuit here this voltage source v1 of 3 volt and the voltage source v2 of 2 volt are connected in series now i am asked to calculate the voltmeter reading here you will see the voltmeter reading v will be the simple algebraic sum of the two dc voltages v1 plus v2 which will be equal to 3 plus 2 equal to 5 volt see just simple algebraic operation 3 plus 2 equal to 5 volt as the dc values are constant constant numerical value we can easily perform this kind of operation now what will happen if we have an alternating voltage here in place of this dc voltage and another alternating voltage in place of this dc voltage how do we calculate or how do we determine the algebraic sum of two or more voltages or current that are varying sinusoidally with respect to time let's say i have two sinusoidal alternating voltage here let's say this is our voltage v1 this is our voltage v2 the voltage v1 has an equation of 5 sin omega t plus 65 degree and the voltage v2 has an equation of 10 sin omega t plus 30 degree now how do we calculate the algebraic sum of these two voltages v equal to v1 plus v2 one approach could be i use simple trigonometric addition and subtraction method 5 sin omega t plus 65 degree plus 10 sin omega t plus 30 degree after that i will expand this and this equation by using this formula sin a plus b after that we have to perform some tedious calculation to get the final result our final result will also be a sinusoid but this will be a very long and tedious approach to calculate the equation of the resultant voltage another possible solution could be to find the algebraic sum on a point to point basis that means let's say at this instant here you will see the magnitude of the v2 is 0 and the instantaneous value of this v1 is let's say 3 so the resultant voltage will be 3 at this instant okay after that let's say at this instant here you will see this will be at 4.5 and this will be at let's say 0.5 therefore 4.5 this should be at 9.5 after that at this point you will see this will be at 5 and this will be at let's say 8.5 so 5 plus 8.5 will be 13.5 so this would be another method if i add the instantaneous value in a point by 
point basis but this is a very long and tedious process and here you have to determine the exact value exact instantaneous values of the alternating voltages to get the exact value of the or exact waveform of the or resultant voltage V. So to avoid this kind of lengthy trigonometric operation or the addition of the instantaneous values of the point by point basis, we introduce a system of complex number when related to AC waveform will result in a technique for finding the algebraic sum of sinusoidal waveform and that is a very quick direct and accurate method and that method is known as phasor now i will talk about phasor or complex algebra when we will be dealing with the ac circuits our alternating current and alternating voltage will be expressed with one of these four equations am sin omega t plus or minus phi naught or negative sign minus am sin omega t plus or minus phi naught or positive cosine plus am cosine of omega t plus or minus phi naught or negative cosine minus am cosine omega t plus or minus phi naught now see we can convert these three waveforms into this waveform plus am sine omega t plus or minus phi naught therefore i can say that the alternating waveform xt equal to am sine omega t plus or minus phi naught is the general equation of alternating quantity or alternating voltage or alternating current okay now see whenever we will have an alternating quantity we have to keep track the amplitude frequency and the phase of the alternating quantity usually the angular frequency omega equal to twice phi f or the frequency f is always a constant value that means we have to keep track the amplitude and phase of the alternating quantity and because of that we need to introduce a complex number system because because complex number always has two pieces of information one is real and imaginary portion of the complex number if it is expressed in rectangular or cartesian coordinate or when it is expressed in polar form it deals with the amplitude and phase See, as to know the behavior of an alternating quantity, we have to know the amplitude and phase of that alternating quantity and our complex number deals with the amplitude and phase when, when it is in polar form. Then I can say that I can express this alternating quantity with a complex number that will represent the amplitude and phase of the alternating quantity and that will be the phasor of this alternating quantity how do we convert any alternating quantity into a phasor quantity let's say our xt equal to a m sine omega t plus phi see this alternating quantity is represented in time domain here you will see the alternating quantity is a variable of time now i will convert it into a complex number to do that i will express the phasor form with this capital number x will be equal to i will take the amplitude of the alternating waveform am after that i will take the phase of the alternating waveform and this representation is known as phasor 
representation of alternating quantity so this is our phasor a phasor is a complex number that represents the peak or maximum value or amplitude of the alternating quantity and the phase of the alternating quantity or sinusoid let's say I have given a current equation I equal to 2 sin omega t plus 10 degree see our current will be a parameter of time now if I want to express this current into phasor form I will simply take the amplitude or maximum value of current and the phase of the current so phasor representation of this current I will be equal to maximum value and angle 10 degree now let's say I am given a current I equal to minus 5 sin omega t minus 30 degree how do we express this current into phasor form see to convert any alternating quantity into phasor form at first you have to know that we will express that waveform into this standard equation am sin omega t plus or minus phase angle phi in that case our phasor x will be equal to the amplitude am and the phase angle if that is positive I will take positive value if that is negative I will take negative value so this will be our phasor see here i equal to minus 5 sin omega t minus 30 degree i can express this equation into this form 5 sin omega t minus 30 degree plus 180 degree because sin theta plus 180 degree will be equal to minus sin theta so this equation and this equation are equivalent so here I will get 5 sin omega t plus 150 degree so the phasor form of this current I will be equal to see phasor is expressed in terms of with capital letter and in bold case so its phasor will be 5 phase angle will be 150 degree I just simply take the magnitude and the phase let's say I am given an alternating voltage V1 equal to 2 cosine omega t minus 10 degree now how do we represent this alternating voltage into phasor form at first we have to express this alternating quantity in the standard form x of t equal to a m sin omega t plus or minus phi therefore the phasor will be x will be magnitude and phase angle phi either plus or minus okay here I am given 2 cos omega t minus 10 degree we can express cosine into sine by using this formula 2 sine theta plus 90 degree this will be equal to 2 sine omega t plus 80 degree so the phasor form of this voltage V1 I will express that with capital V1 and bold case so I will take the phase and amplitude 80 degree and this is how we can convert any alternating waveform into phasor form and the phasor will represent the amplitude 
end phase of the alternating quantity so when i have an alternating quantity v equal to v m sin omega t plus phi naught initial angle if i convert it into phasor form i will get v equal to simple v m and phase angle phi naught okay this is phase angle and this is peak value or maximum value of the amplitude so this is the polar form of the phasor i can represent the polar form of the phasor in a two dimensional axis in the x axis i will take real value and in the y axis i will take imaginary value let's say the point indicated by the phasor is this point if i join the origin and that point the i will get the magnitude of the phasor here the magnitude of the phasor will indicate the length of this radius vector and the angle phi naught will indicate the angle produced with the positive real axis so our magnitude vm indicates the length of the radius vector and our phase phi naught indicates the angle created by that vector vector or phasor with positive real axis now see i can take two projection of this point one is on the real axis and another on the imaginary axis now let's say the projection of this point on the real axis i denote that with simple x and the projection of this point in the imaginary axis i express that with y here you will see the x will indicate the value of vm cosine phi naught and our y will indicate vm sin phi naught so let's say i am expressing that complex number v in the form of x plus j y here this x will represent the vm cos phi naught and the y will represent vm sin phi naught so what is this j j is phasor operator whose magnitude is root over minus 1 usually when we have a complex number of this format z equal to x plus i y we represent the complex operator with i here we will express the complex operator with j equal to root over minus 1 because in ac circuit analysis you will see we will express the alternating current with the small i therefore to avoid any kind of confusion we indicate the phasor operator or complex operator with j and the magnitude of this j and the magnitude of this i are same okay and that is root over minus 1 so i can express any alternating quantity into phase phasor form if i express that into polar form we will use the polar form of the phasors when we do multiplication and division and we will use the rectangular form of the phasor when we do addition and subtraction of phasors or complex numbers okay that's it thank you